Well, we've got two rather grumpy looking cats in the studio mm. today alongside their owner, Leslie Smith, and alongside her is vet Scott Miller. Now, look, I look at these cats and I've just said to you in the break when, when Leslie, you brought your lovely cats over, I've only just noticed that their faces are flat because, I mean, I'm not a massive cat person or animal person, but I've only just noticed that, Scott. Yeah, and I think most people look at face value and go, that is a cute looking animal. Mm. But cute doesn't necessarily mean healthy. And that's why, as a veterinary profession, we're very concerned about the rise of what we call brachycephalic breeds, flat-faced breeds, because they're getting so extreme and so flat. And certainly, if you look at this, uh, this guy here, you can see, if you look side-on as a profile, it's flat. It's like, yeah. it's like a plate. It's and as a result, they have a squashed nose, um, so they have respiratory problems. Um, they have issues in the back of their throat because all those structures are pushed back as well. They have issues with their eyes. As you can see, this little one here, um, oh. there's tear staining as a result that, yeah. that runs oh. down. Their uh, eyes are more prone to corneal ulcers as well. Uh, this one's actually even got some um, little benign tumours that are developed because of all the irritation that this cat suffered. And certainly with Grumpy Cat there, uh, had an issue with urinary problems. Well, um, Leslie, who, who's beside Scott here, she has uh, three uh, flat-faced Persian cats, Ubi, Paris and Victoria. And uh, I just want to say, Leslie, you're not part of the problem. Hopefully you're part of the solution because you do God's work. You go out there and you adopt these cats yeah. which are abandoned. And why would they tend to be abandoned, do you think? Um, for several reasons. Uh, Paris isn't a flat-faced Persian, though. She is a, a full-nosed Persian. Right. She's called a doll face. She came from a home to the rescue centre that I go to. And these two, um, we don't know how they got there, to be fair. They could have just been dumped on a doorstep. Mm. which some of them are. But if they develop medical problems, that involves bills, mm. bills involve mm. expense. Which they do. I mean, Obi's just last year had an ulcer in his eye, which was quite expensive. Mm. Yeah, but a lot of people may decide then, you know, there's a big cost involved in this and they then don't care for their cat anymore, which is why you end up with That's them, right, is, yeah. Is what I'm, what I'm yeah. trying to say here. But we're, we're horrified, really, Scott, listening to this. I mean, however cute or lovely or whatever they look, why is this allowed to happen? I mean, we're to blame because we are the consumers and we're saying, oh, yes, like a bit of that. Yes, mm -hmm. and somebody's out there breeding them. Yeah, so the problem arises because as humans, we are pre-programmed to like the look of babies, big eyes, flat faces. And actually, it's been shown by research that's come out just this week that dogs' faces have evolved over the 2,000 years that we've been living with them to actually have bigger eyes and more human-like appearances because we're naturally drawn to them. And is that us that's done that? So, yes, because of um, unwitting uh, selection towards those animals that like, have an appearance that we like. Mm. So when we see an image uh, on social These media... These aren't we... healthy animals. And as you rightly say, Eamon, the problem here is that people take them and choose them based on face value and then they bring them into their homes. They haven't done the research. They realise that they have got a huge amount of health mm. problems. Maybe they haven't got them insured. They can't afford to pay for them. And then they wind up in the lovely hands of Leslie here. Do you think that... Instagram and celebrity plays quite a big part in this because, as you say, you know, I've, I'm actually allergic to cats, so I've, I've never had a cat. You don't want to cuddle then? I know, I know, yeah. I would love one, but I keep seeing the hair flying about and I know I'm going to pass out in a minute. But I, I look at them and I think, yeah, they're, they're gorgeous, they're cute, they're lovely, mm. but... And if I was going to get a cat, of course, yeah, I'd want one of them, but mm. that's probably purely because of the fact I've seen pictures of these cats on Instagram and I know Taylor Swift, Kim Kardashian, we've seen it all before. Do you think that's caused the rise in this? Absolutely. I think that we are so obsessed with appearance uh, these days that it does actually relate to animals as well. Mm. I don't think that um, the celebrities are actually trying to say, hey, get one of these, but it's just the very nature of them almost accidentally advertising them on social media, which means that people that might be potential owners, rather than doing the due diligence that they should be doing to make sure what health issues they might have and what special needs they might have before purchasing them. They're just seeing them online going, that's cute, I want that. And then the but problem not is... realising... Yeah, but the problem's perpetuated as well because the, you know, the breeders are being encouraged to breed them with flatter and flatter faces. And actually, thank goodness, there was a, a ruling in Switzerland recently which actually meant that some uh, breeders were prosecuted 
off the back of producing animals like this because it does, mm. it is tantamount to torture. If you are breeding an animal that is going to have a life of yeah, discomfort that, and but pain, but why aren't we doing more allowed. about it here? And I presume, Leslie, this is something you would like uh, taken into account. Sorry, that yeah. Because also we're not just talking about cats here, we're talking about are they uh, pugs and French... French bulldogs. Absolutely, yeah. Bulldogs. I mean, the rise of the um, brachycephalic dogs as well is massive. And the French bulldogs gone from 10 years ago wasn't on the top 10 list in the UK and now it's number one along why, why, why is that allowed to happen? Why, you know, why, why aren't we doing something here about all of this? Yeah, it's tricky because uh, people are allowed to, to, to breed animals and certainly as a veterinary profession, we're not saying don't breed animals. What we're asking for is to breed for health and not breed for looks. Mm. And that's what we really want. And certainly a lot of these dogs and cats who have this look that we all are attracted to come with a lot of health issues. And people actually don't know that because I didn't know that. No, that's right. But, but the breeders do. Yeah. And, and if the governing bodies would actually make some changes to what the breed specifications are for bringing them into the ring and say, look, they need to be able to breathe as they're running around the ring, then mm. that should be a, a basic minimum as, as far um, as we're concerned.